Hello Prepper family, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be discussing the infamous dark winter that we keep hearing about from our president, from the media, um, and that we are being told that we need to prepare for. We're still facing a very dark winter, a dark winter, a dark winter. In this video, I'm only gonna be skimming the surface. I'm just gonna go over what the original project was and kind of what the buzzwords are for how it applies for this winter. Um, because if you start researching this, it's literally rabbit trail after rabbit trail. There's so many conspiracy theories on this. There's so many opinions on what it means and there's different sources saying different things. So I'm literally just going to be the tip of the iceberg today. All right, so going out to, if you just research dark winter, the first thing that comes up is this John Hopkins Bloom, Bloomberg School of Public Health and they were actually a part of the project. So I want to say this is a reliable source and that's what I'm gonna be going with. So, about the exercise, Dark Winter. On June 23rd through 20, 20, sorry, 22nd through 23rd, 2001, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the John Hopkins Center for Civilian Biodefense Bio Studies, the ANSER Institute for Homeland Security, and the Oklahoma City National Memorial Institute for the Prevention of Terrorism hosted a senior level war game examining the national security intergovernmental and informational changes of a biological attack on the American homeland. Right off the bat, this is not just like a college doing a study. This is not like some geek on the internet doing a study. Like these are some pretty significant names and pretty big players in our government that conducted this dark winter um, exercise. This goes on to say, with tensions rising in the Taiwan, Taiwan Straits, which is interesting because tensions are rising with them right now, and a major crisis developing in the Southwest Asia, also interesting because their pandemic um, numbers supposedly are surging right now. A smallpox outbreak was confirmed by the CDC in Oklahoma City. During 13 days of this game, the disease spread to 25 states and 15 other countries. 14 participants and 60 observers witnessed terrorism, warfare, and slow motion. Discussions database, some rather heated and decision focused on the public health response, lack of an adequate supply of smallpox vaccines, roles a mission of federal and state government, civil liberties associated with quarantine and isolation, the role of the DOD and potential military response to the, announce, the anonymous attack, additionally a predictable 24-7 a predictable news cycle quickly developed that focused the nation and the world on the attack and response. Five representatives from the National Press Corps, including print and broadcast, participated in the game and conducted a lengthy press conference with the president. So that's just kind of explaining um, what the what the simulation was and what um, happened from it. It goes on to say the players were introduced to the crisis during a national security council meeting scheduled to address several emerging crises, including the development of a carrier task force in the Middle East. Kind of really interesting because, you know, we know what's going on in the Middle East with the Taliban and everything right now. Um, and it's just kind of interesting that they were saying that this was announced when there's a bunch of crisis happening. Kind of sounds familiar. So let's jump to the findings. It says, number one, an attack on the United States with biological weapons could threaten vital national security interests. Mass and civilian casualties, breakdown in essential institutions, violation of democratic process, civil disorder, loss of confidence in government, and reduced U.S. strategic flexibility abroad are among the ways biological attack might compromise U.S. security. Sounds interesting. Number two, current organization structures and capabilities are not well suited for the management of BW attack. Major fault lines exist between different levels of government, federal, state, and local, between government and the private sector. I'm not gonna read all of these. Um, I will link this article that way if you want to check it out, so let's jump to three. There is no sur or there's no surge capable or capability of the U.S. healthcare and public health systems, or in the pharmaceutical and vaccine industries. The, in in the institutional limited surge ca or capacity could result in hospitals being overwhelmed and become inoperable. Number four, dealing with the media will be a major immediate challenge for all levels of government information management and communication. Number five. 
Should a contagious bioweapon path pathogen be used containing the spread of disease will be present significant ethical, political, and cultural operations and legal changes. It goes on to say smallpox because of its high case fatality rates and transmittability represents one of the most serious biological warfare threats in the civilian population. In 1980, the World Health Assembly announced that smallpox has been eradicated and recommended that all countries seize jabs. Although labs in two countries still officially store smallpox samples, the US and Russia, it's a reappearance would almost certainly indicate an intentional outbreak. All right, so obviously that was a fake simulation, but, and I can't really comment on a ton of it because of this platform, but you can kind of see how ironic the similarities of this simulation to what is going on now. There's been a lot of people speculating that last year, I guess two years ago really now, this pandemic was just a test run or it's setting up people to be even more ill for whatever's coming. I don't know, <laughs> but I just wanted to put this video out there and just let you know this was the, the operation, the exercise, whatever you wanna call it, that happened and it's eerily similar to what is unfolding currently in the united states and um, i don't think it's a coincidence that our president continuously says dark winter we're still facing a very dark winter dark winter, dark winter. in my humble opinion i believe that certain individuals research the weak points in our government the weak points in our society sorry my baby monitor is dying I believe that this simulation was to <laughs> see where our weak points were and I believe that those are unfolding now, but that is my opinion. I'm not saying it's fact, fact checkers, um, but I do think that if people were capable of planning what is going on now, who knows what this winter is going to be. All I know is that we need to buckle up, we need to be ready. We need to have our preps going and we need to try and get ourselves as healthy as possible so that we do have our best chance for whatever is coming. Now, I am so curious to hear what you have to say after reading over this simulation. If you see the similarities that I do, make sure to comment that opinion in the comment section down below. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It's free and only takes a second and it really helps this channel out and I'll catch you guys all in my next one. Bye.